Now, as some of you may recall, back at the 2019 D23 Star Wars presentation, Kathleen Kennedy came out on stage and told us fans that the scripts for the Kenobi series were all written, and that filming of it would begin the next year. But shortly thereafter, I believe it was about a month later, we learned that wasn't exactly true, that not only had just two of the six scripts for the series actually been written, but that they, or she, was unhappy with the story and the whole thing was scrapped, pre-production was halted, they were on the hunt for a new writer, and we were likely only going to get four episodes instead of six when all was said and done. And in all fairness here, if the scripts they had and the direction of the show was really that bad, then yeah, I'm happy that this happened, that it was delayed and the process was essentially started over. I'd much rather wait another year for something potentially great than quickly get something that might be average or worse yet, flat out bad. However here, one way or the other, Kennedy probably shouldn't have so boldly declared the scripts were done and filming was set to begin next year, when only two were actually done and apparently they weren't all that good. And I am more than a little curious who decided they weren't good. Was it Kennedy that sat down and read them and didn't like them after the fact, after she said they were done and then realized they weren't very good? Or was she on board with the first two scripts, made her a bold declaration at D23, figuring the others would be done soon enough and would be good, and then someone else read them, maybe someone at Disney or someone at Lucasfilm concerned about the project who took them to Disney, and they were the ones who shut it down and made Kennedy look the fool for what she had said. Honestly here, it's probably closer to the latter, I'd guess. Anyway, though, it turns out that wasn't the only thing she said at that presentation. That wasn't entirely true, because it was at that very same D23 that Diego Luna and Alan Tudyk were brought out on stage, and we fans were told both of them would be part of the upcoming, and at the time unnamed, Cassian Andor series. And in case you've forgotten, Diego Luna played Cassian Andor in Rogue One, and Alan Tudyk played K2SO, arguably the most popular or well-liked character in the whole movie. And so hearing at the time that K2SO would be in there got a little sigh of relief out of me and really added to my excitement for the show. Because though I didn't think the characters in Rogue One were as boring and forgettable as some people have said they are, I still did think, for better or worse, that K2 was the best and most enjoyable, and he brought a sense of levity to the film that was needed and did it in a more classic Star Wars style. In other words, I thought he added the right kind of humor and was just all around a likable character. And though certainly the character of Cassian Andor could and likely will be built up rather well in his own series that he would become a truly great character given enough time, I thought K2 would be needed in there at the start to really pull in the fans who either had their doubts about the show or just didn't really care about it. And I have seen a lot of people saying they're not all too interested in it, even when they thought K2 was going to be in it, but it turns out he won't be, at least not in the first season. Because just the other day, Alan Tudyk confirmed that it's filming right now, but that he's not a part of it, but could be in later seasons, or would be if the later seasons end up happening, making what Kennedy said at D23 a couple years back about him being in it only true from a certain point of view, it seems. And though, yes, the show's first season could still end up being absolutely incredible, or even just good, even without K2SO in it, it won't matter too much if no one tunes in, or if Star Wars fans and your average viewer don't pay those monthly Disney Plus subscription fees to watch it. And the best way to lure them in, honestly, would have been with the most memorable and popular character from Rogue One. It would have been by including K2 and to feature him heavily in the marketing leading up to its release. In fact, you'd really think the very first or one of the first episodes of the show would be how these two meet or how Cassian comes across this Imperial security droid and hacks into it or whatever he does to turn him to his side. And yes, I do realize there is actually a one-shot comic book that covers this, that covers how these two essentially meet, which they could either loosely or strictly adhere to, I suppose. And as someone who bought and read that comic, it'd be nice if they did, but I certainly won't hold my breath. Because I think when it comes to a sort of canon hierarchy or level of importance and likeliness to be retconned for the greater good if need be, comic books would be at the very bottom of the list and the source most likely to be overwritten, especially when it's just a one-shot comic that I'm guessing probably not a lot of people even read, and that what's replacing it is a live-action series. In other words, if given the chance to get that far, I'm fully expecting a new sort of first meeting between these two characters in the series, and I'm surprised it won't be happening right in the first season and early in it, though I will say by the sound of things, it seems like they do have a overall plan laid out, which is always nice to hear, 
in regards to a new Star Wars project these days, because it sounded like Alan Tudyk may have details about how he would eventually be brought into the show. And if I had to guess here, I'd imagine that the first season of the series will kind of show that Cassian is a cold-blooded and all-for-the-cause type character, no matter what he has to do, which is kind of how he was introduced in Rogue One when he shoots an informant of his in the back, rather than see him be captured by the Empire, which I gotta say was a pretty great and jarring way to start that film, to show that the Rebellion wasn't afraid to get their hands dirty, shall we say, yet by the end of the movie he is sort of a changed man. And so what I think this series will ultimately do with the character is to show why he will eventually have that sort of change at the end of Rogue One, we'll even get a more extreme version of the character at the start of the series, and that when K2 is brought in, ironically enough, it'll be a droid that sort of brings out the humanity of him, and perhaps why they don't want K2 in there right away is because they want at least a full season to really establish who he is at this time and why. Though, of course, the problem with this premise is it'd be a lot like The Mandalorian with how Grogu brings about a change in Din Djarin, though I don't think there'd be quite the same emotional attachment between Cassian and K2 that there is between those two. Either way, it's very similar, so maybe I'll end up being dead wrong about what they do with this character, though I don't know what else you really do with him. I mean, all we really know about his background right now is what he said in Rogue One, that he's been in this fight since he was six years old, meaning, again, a starting point for him in the show would likely be a colder and even more detached version of the character than we saw in Rogue One, and that final sort of change in him really can't or shouldn't come about until Rogue One. We can maybe see hints of it, but again, the way he kills that informant at the start of Rogue One implies he's still in that whatever-it-takes mindset overall. And so all of this is why Cassian feels like a really odd choice to sort of base an entire series around, because there's not a lot of room for growth unless you really do start him at the extreme, that he's just sort of this really cold and uncaring and all-for-the-cause type character, which will make him probably come across like a straight-up terrorist and not a freedom fighter, though the line between those two often is blurry anyway. But if he's really that extreme, you'd think he'd be more likely to be with Saw Gerrera and the Partisans than with the actual Rebel Alliance. And honestly here, my only guess as to why him, why a Cassian Andor series of all characters in Star Wars, is that Diego Luna is a huge, huge Star Wars fan, and was likely more than happy to do it. And with just how successful Rogue One was, they thought a series based on it would be good or do really well. When in all reality, as I've said before, I thought Rogue One, yes, was a really good movie. It's the best Disney Star Wars film, in my opinion. But it certainly benefited from the excitement generated from The Force Awakens. It came out when everyone was still just excited to have Star Wars back. And people flocked to see it. Furthermore, here we know exactly how Cassian's story has to end. And this also won't be the first time we've seen the Rebel Alliance during this time period, with it being set about five years before the start of the original trilogy, which is about a year before the show Rebels takes place. And so I think for a lot of people, there's this sort of feeling of great, another prequel type show. And though you could say something similar about The Mandalorian, that it's also set in a time period where we know a lot of the things that will eventually have to happen, it does deal with a different aspect of that time period and with characters whose fates we don't know anything about. We don't know what happens with The Mandalorian people on the whole, and we don't know what will become of characters like Din Djarin, Bo-Katan, Grogu, and so on. Whereas again, we know exactly how Cassian's story ends, and what will eventually become of the Rebel Alliance. Still, I'm not saying I have no hopes for this series. Even after learning the news about K2 not being in the first season, it could certainly end up being great, and from everything I've heard, Disney and Lucasfilm are dumping a ton of money into it to make that happen. They've said they're treating this no different than they would a movie, and recently some photos of a massive set for the show leaked, and they do look pretty good. And though maybe there isn't a ton that you can do with the character of Cassian Andor, and again, we know exactly how his story ends, there are or will be new characters that we meet that could end up being interesting and could end up being great in the long run. There's also a chance, a good chance I'd say, that we could see Ahsoka Tano in this show. She was the very first Fulcrum agent for the Rebellion, and since Cassian is also a Fulcrum agent, there's every chance she's the one who recruits him. It may even be that instead of meeting K2 in the first episode or season, we'll meet Ahsoka instead and she'll have a somewhat sizable role in that first season. Who knows? Like I said, I'm not giving up hope and there's plenty of potential here. And I think the real question or challenge it faces is how many people will ultimately give it that chance. My guess is, despite what a lot of fans say, 
they will watch it. They will give it a try. And if it has some good surprises, if we get Ahsoka in there, it'll end up doing just fine. And we'll get to Season 2 and beyond, which will then bring in K2SO. Well, that's all I've got for you this time. Now it's your turn to tell me what you think. Are you excited for Andor, even without K2 in Season 1? Or is it maybe a deal breaker without him? Or could Ahsoka being brought in change your mind still? Whatever the case may be, leave a comment below and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.